What's happening? This How's it going, man? Time, man? What's up, Shell? How you doing? This is the 221 Trap Podcast, man. I'm honored to have a, a good friend of mine in this AAU game. That right there is a rarity. Uh, loyal man, great father, great husband. Uh, just a guy always called me when I was at my lowest. Independent man, foresight, visionary, leader. Um, the great Derek Shelby. What's going on? Uh, good to see you, my brother. Good to see you, man. So uh, I want to talk about, before we go into the history, let's talk about the circuit, man. What 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 are we doing with the circuit and what's your vision for it? Yeah, good question. Yeah, we, um, me and my partner, Alec Kingsky, started the, the circuit in uh, 2019, right? But previous to that, there was a company called D1 Circuit mm -hmm. that Alec was kind of running uh, on his own um, through Sports Engine. Um, that was later bought by NBC Sports. So um, he, he he was looking at leaving that organization and, and doing something different. So he um, called me. We partnered up, and we formed the co company in uh, October 2019. Mm. Um, interesting thing to that, that was a few months later, COVID hits. Wow. Right. In March 2020, COVID hit. So we're ramping up trying to get ready for this first season in 2019, 2020 spring and summer. And then COVID hits and everything, the whole world shuts down. Um, ended up being a blessing in disguise because it allowed us to get a lot of the, the software built, a lot of our vision put in place. Mm. And um, we, we, we done maybe one event, maybe. And then by that 2021 season, we were ready to go. Wow. Uh, and I just finished our second year, 2022. Wow. Uh, it's been, it's been, it's been, it's been interesting. I mean, I've been on a lot of different sides from, you know, of course, a father first. Yeah. You know, then a coach. And now on the more of the media side and um, plenty of reasons why I got into this. I'm sure we'll get to that in, at some point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So as the circuit be gone, what is the benefit of the circuit? Like I know personally, because I know you, but let's let them know what's the benefit of the circuit and what's the vision of you and Alec of it? Like, where does it go? Well, I mean, the, the, the benefit of the circuit it just is media, it's content. It's allowing these kids to get um, maximum amount of exposure um, as possible. Um, but we are basically, um, our vision is to try to become the ESPN for grassroots sports. Oh wow! You know, being able to to shed light on 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 kids that are doing well um, all over America and uh, all over the world at some point, you know. Yeah. So that's generally it. We we're, we're content. We're, we're creators. Um, we got videographers. We got you know probably a staff of about 10, 10 employees um, from scouts to you name it, right? You know. So we work with um, the Nike EYBL. Um, Adidas 3 SSB, Under Armour, AAU, we cover everybody. Wow. Um, so it's been, it's been, it's been a lot of fun actually, because it's just basketball. Right. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but been able to, uh, to, to do that and, and get a lot of uh, content out there for these kids has been a blessing. Now, knowing your background and knowing some of the ob obstacles that we'll, I'm sure we'll cover later, mm -hmm. how does that help you in presenting a package like the circuit? Because, you know exactly what's real and what's not. So does that advantage help you out a lot? Yeah, yeah. Being that I, I played basketball, you know, I played Division One basketball way back in the day, and um, and I played it and I coached it. You know, there's a lot of things out there when it comes to evaluation of talent, right? And, you know, um, and when you've played it, that helps yeah. for sure. When you coached it, that's a big deal yeah. because when you're preparing um, as a coach to be the team, you know, you have to break down film. You have to go look at all those things and you know, who's good. Yeah. Right. You know, who you need to try to try to stop in order to win that game. And, um, and this evaluation business that we're in, it just seems like everybody who has Twitter is an evaluator now. Right. Um, and, you know, the most interesting thing about the evaluators is that a lot of these guys have never done either. They've neither played nor coached. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't know what they're talking about. 
Yeah. Well, some do, but it's just hard to lend credibility to guys that hasn't that haven't been there, right? You know, so this has always been my take on it. Um, and, and like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll stand up, stand on that hill. And not only that, from my opinion, you know, I understand you you're a modest guy, but not only you you produced a son that was talented, and you were able to develop other kids, while those kids. You what I call one of the few guys around the country, the anti-great daddy ball coach. Because mm -hmm. your son was a great player, but every player you took around him got an opportunity to shine. You know what I mean? It wasn't just Michael Jackson and some, like, every kid around you got to show their best strengths and abilities. And that's what I feel like would be your key moving forward with the circuit. Just your fairness and your ability to develop. You raised a child. You raised other kids. You've been on these road trips. Even when we met, you had a gang of kids teaching them how to play basketball, and I just think that gives you a different pivot than a lot of guys. Yeah, you know what? I mean, I, I'm actually wanting to write a book called Daddy Ball uh, <laughs> because that's a very common topic in this industry. Yeah. And, you know, I got accused of that by a lot of outsiders all the time. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I can have my son not play but one second, but that one second was the reason why he played because I'm his dad, right? Wow. Um, it's just amazing how that, that, that comes up. When you start being successful in this industry, people are looking for reasons to try to um, affect that, you know, take you down or what have you. Yeah. Um, but, you know, one thing I did do is that, you know, um, we, 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 we were pretty good growing up. We started this thing when they were four years old, right? Mm -hmm. I had Noah and I had Ryland Griffin with that Alabama when they were four. Wow. Like four, right? Yeah. I mean, they weren't even in, they were pre-K. Wow. And that's when our journey began. You know, by the time I met you, we were in third grade. Right? Was this Dallas? Now, this is all Dallas, right? No, yeah, this, no we met you in, we met you in Orlando and at, at, at Nationals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're, 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 we're third grade, right? And we thought, we think we're the best team. We're the best team in the city. Right, you know, we think we're really good. Yeah, man, and we go. So we're going to we're going to AU Nationals now. We we ready to go. You know, we we no one came close to us in our city, even when we played up. Yeah, so we go to we go to Orlando, and the first game is this team named George Hill Rising Star. <laughs> so I'm like, man, they got. I know that I know that brand's good. Yeah. You know, you know, and I don't think we got across half court to the third quarter. <laughs> Y'all literally beat the brakes off of us. <laughs> and and that was a pivotal game. I still got all the pictures. I even got the video for that. Wow. Um, you know, that was an interesting game because that woke us up. More like not only did it wake me up, I knew there were, there were gonna be good teams out there, but it really woke up the parents. Mm -hmm. Right? Because they baby's the best in the world, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we all love our kids. Um, but that was a wake up call for us. And uh when we played you guys there and I mean, like I said, with Claver and, and, and JJ and that, I mean, like, and the kid that had glasses. Javon Tracy, yeah, Javon yeah, Tracy, I mean, Tyrell Tracy. Yeah. We, we had no chance. Yeah. You guys, you know, <laughs> finally let us get across half court, and we think we scored 10 points. Yeah. yeah. You know, that was third grade nationals, and like I said, we didn't win a game in pool play, not one. But if you remember after that game, like, that's where our friendship was formed. Yeah. 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 I, I just yeah, had we to talked see, about an hour. I mean, I, I still, you know, Every so often, I check in with the Clavers also. Yeah, right. Good people, you know. But you, you, you guys, that motivated me. Wow. Right. You know, so third grade nationals, we don't win one game in, in pool play. We finally get two wins somewhere on the back door. Right. <laughs> you know, so, um, uh, so that was an interesting take there. Yeah. Um, we lost to Bryce Griggs' team, Gulf Coast Blue Chips. Yeah, I remember that there yeah. as well. And I'll come back to that in a second. So that was third grade, and then, uh, and if you don't mind, I'll go to fourth grade. Keep going. Uh, we get to fourth grade nationals in Lexington, Kentucky, right? I remember you know, that. we go in there like, man, we didn't win a game last year. I think we got better. We made, made a few made a few additions to the team. We go up there. We're in Lexington, and we 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 go three and one in pool play. Now, which team is this? What's the name of this team? We were, we were Pro Skills. Pro Skills, okay. We were okay. Pro Skills, which is an EYBL okay. organization. 
So we go to fourth grade. We get we go three and one in pool play, and we advance to the championship bracket, which is basically the Sweet Sixteen. Um, during during that run in Lexington, um, I forgot who beat us, but I know we ended up beating the team out of Atlanta. My yeah. boy, my buddy Adam runs. Great, yeah, yeah, your gifts, my boy. Skills, it's called the Skills Factory now. Skills Factory. It was uh, it was Atlanta Express. Yeah, yeah, basically that that, that, that group there. <laughs> yeah. Bruce Thornton, Bruce those Thornton guys. And all those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We beat them. You know, that was a big thing for us. And we go three and one, advance to the Sweet 16. First game, we end up, we end up playing um, ARC. Remember ARC? All right, California. Oh, my yeah. God, those yeah. guards was ridiculous. Yeah, these little bitty guards and Afro. And the big guy coaching, the big tall yeah. guy. Yeah, and they, had, I mean, they just, I mean, they, they were, we were close. We were, I think it was tied going to the fourth. They just got away from us. And we ended up yeah. losing. And then we go to fifth grade. I made a few more adjustments. Okay. I went and brought in Bryce Griggs, who's at overtime now. Okay. And I went and got Mark Mitchell, who's at Duke. Wow. Along with a couple That's other crazy. kids and kept my core. I also yeah. brought in Keontae George, who's at Baylor. Wow. Right? And we ran the table. I think we went 70-0. and 0. <laughs> That was fifth grade? Fifth grade. Okay. And, we, okay. and we were the fifth grade AU national champions. We actually ended up beating Jaden Bradley's team in the championship game. Wow. That year. Wow. Um, we ended up playing, we had an ARC rematch um, in the final four there. And they had us down five with a minute to go. And we ended up beating them. I don't feel to the day I'll see how that happened. Wow. Um, but just that evolution from third grade being not winning a game in pool play. To getting motivated by the George Hill and your guys and your staff, fourth grade making a big jump, fifth grade national champion. We haven't looked back since. Wow! Right, you know, so um, that's kind of how the story went with AAU, and um, built those relationships with those kids. And to this day, I'm really extremely close to all those kids and all those families. You know, it's an amazing thing in this in this industry because people look for everything that try, try to say you're this and you're that. And I had a lot of people that didn't really like me. There was really no reason not to, other than we were successful, right? And another thing is that I never needed them, meaning I didn't need your 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 endorsement um, for my team, myself, the program. I just went out and done it, right? And in this business, if you don't, if they don't feel you need them. They don't support you. you know, everybody has an angle, right? So I was able to put it together with a group of great kids and great families. And when I when I was recruiting these kids, um, you know, because doing this was hard. Because keep in mind, I was a dad on that fifth grade national team. And my two assistant coaches were also dads. I remember on the kids on the team. Yeah, I remember. Right? That's extremely hard to do. Yeah. When you got three coaches, three dads, right? Um, but we pulled it off and we pulled it off because we communicated, right? Every, we were transparent. Every parent knew what was going on. We spoke, we talked. Yeah. And I think they really appreciated that. But when I recruited, I recruited the parents first. Exactly. And I hope their and I hope their kid has some ability because in this industry, Jay, as you know, it's hard. Yeah. It's extremely difficult, extremely difficult to do. And you got to have good parents. You know, because one thing I do know about this industry is that if your parents are knucklehead, I guarantee the kid is too, right? So when I would go out and, and, and recruit kids, I look for the right parent. And the kid has some ability, that was a plus. That was a, that was a plus. Let right? me ask you, let me ask you, Coach, what qualities as you were coming up? So you rebuilding, you rebuilding. I know, I know the time and effort you're putting into this. You're organizing kids, vans. What qualities? Say a kid say he's, he's, he's borderline good enough. What qualities, because I want AAU parents to hear this, what are you looking for in a parent that, 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 that's possibly looking to play for you at a high level? Yeah, I, I'm looking at a parent, the first thing I want to know is expectations, right? What are you wanting to get out of this? That's, you want, you got you to gotta set the foundation early on expectation the way everybody's on the same page, right? So I'm looking for a parent's, that have the right expectations of whether where their kid is and what they're trying to do, their goals. And we set goals. And you're damn right we achieved every last one of them. Right. Wow. 
but we set goals for all these kids and all these families. And I, I really researched the parents a lot. I would talk to them a lot. You know, I never, I never got rid of a kid because of the kid. Not one time. Never. It would be because of a parent. Wow. Right. Cause you don't get them all right. Yeah. And I probably had a 99% success ratio with parents. Wow. Over the years. Yeah. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. So I look, I look at that expectations, you know, you know, do they understand what we're trying to do? Um, you know, do they have the, I mean, in this industry, you got to have the financial means a lot of times, right? You know, even though I had um, help and donors and all that, we raised money. It's always good to have someone that can, that, that, that had a chance to afford they can't. I would need to know that early. That way I can help them, right? Um, so that's kind of what I looked at. Mainly expectations is number one. You got to be on the same yeah. page with the parent. Yeah, yeah. Now, I want to talk about the middle school transition. Um, mm-hmm. Sixth grade. When did you? When did the? Um, when did you become founder? When did the Drive Nation? What grade was that? I can't remember. Uh, actually, so sixth grade, we were still pro skills. Okay. And actually, we got upset in the Elite Eight against Madison County. I mean, the whole the whole gym was packed. We're the defending champs, and there was nobody going for us but our parents. Mm. Right. I remember seeing my buddy Matt with D1 Shooters. And Maryland's finest coach high five, and when we lost, right? I mean, they were all happy. I mean, we 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 went in there loaded, right? You know, we always looked good. We have we had matching Kobe's on. I mean, we yeah, were early. You know, we, we looked the best. Hoodies. Even if we don't play well. Y'all we don't was look the first. Good. Y'all was the first dudes with the Nike hoodies. We the first ones ever with the Nike hoodie. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sleeveless hoodie. Yeah. I, I think colleges with it a year later. We were there first. Yeah. And um, yeah. so that was sixth grade. And that was the last time we played AAU. By making the jump to seventh grade, we wanted to get out of the AAU and get more in the showcase, higher level type events. And seventh grade is when I, I met with um, Jermaine and um, came on to, to start and build Drive Nation. Um, but before that, let me take you back a couple of times. I was instrumental in building the Texas Titans. Oh, wow. First. People don't know that. So back when Julius Randle was in middle school, right? Um, I helped recruit and build Texas Titans. Then after that, I built Pro Skills. Then mm. after that, I built Drive Nation. You know, but I've Why always tried Pro to Skills at when you got there, like as you. Uh, they were said. getting started. Um, it's ran by Jeff Webster until this day, still ran by Jeff Webster. But he was working for the Titans a lot, so I kind of brought my team in and started building it, building the program, and I spent about. Uh, almost seven years of pro skills. And in seventh grade, I went to the, to build drive nation just for another opportunity. Uh, Jermaine, had, he had his own facilities, which was a plus. And, um, I remember there, I remember them, you know, putting the shovel in the ground, the drive nation. Mm. Right. And, you know, our first year there, I had a, I helped them build a, a good 17 U team. Um, and early we had Tyrese Maxey, um, but we had Drew Timmy, who's at Gonzaga. You know, Samuel Williamson is at SMU now from Louisville. Jamias Ramsey, who's, who's I think in the G League or NBA now. Mm-hmm. I helped build that group, right? The following year, they brought in, I brought in, helped bring in RJ Hampton, those guys. So my seventh grade team was good, right? My seventh grade team was good. We had, we had a good squad, you know. Um, I'm sorry, I take that back. Seventh grade, I think we were pro skills. Eighth grade, we went to Drive Nation. Okay. Seventh grade yeah. was last year of pro skills. Seventh grade was last year of pro skills. I remember going to Vegas. My Vegas team in pro skills was, of course, Noah at Vanderbilt, Ryland at Alabama, Trey White was at USC, hmm. um, Bryce Griggs at overtime, um, Mark Mitchell at Duke, Derek Whitehead at Duke. Um, I mean, that was my squad, right? And that damn Imani base beat us. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> And then wow. in eighth grade, I, I go to build Drive Nation. Yeah. And then from there, after three years there, I, I built Team Trey Young for Trey. When I was at Pro Skills, I actually brought Trey to Pro Skills. Wow. Eighth and ninth grade, Trey Young. I did not know sure. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Trey Young. Um, I brought Mitchell Robinson, who's on the Knicks. Yeah, so I've been doing this a long time. Just, most of the time, it's been kind of behind the scenes. Yeah. Right? Kind of, yeah. kind of try to stay low and just go go build it from there. So. so what was the driving decision? I understand with Drive Nation, um, even at the time I told you that was so innovative, getting the building, 
Um, you guys eventually had the EYBL down there. Um, your tournaments were A1. So once you build that, what's the mentality? What was the, what was the relationship to make you say, okay, let me, let me get the steering wheel on this Trey Young AU program now? Well, I mean, I mean, I, I spent about three years at Drive Nation. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, two and a half, basically. Eighth grade, uh, ninth grade. Um, uh, and I needed to leave that after ninth grade um, because I'm sitting there, you know, looking at the landscape, you know, I'm looking to, to see where my son's been developing, where he's at. And I had moved him to point guard in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. Um, what happened is after seventh grade, Bryce Griggs went and played 16U as an eighth mm -hmm. grader mm -hmm. with Houston Hoops or James Harden, one of them. Um, so what I ended up doing when Bryce made that transition to play up, literally my first phone call was to Keontae George's mom. And I said, hey, Bryce is leaving, and I'm okay with that. He's ready. I said, what position does Keontae want to play? I talked to Ryland Griffin's parents and I talked to Keontae's parents because I wanted to, because we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. And it, they, Keontae wanted to be off the ball and Ryland was going to be a wing. So I moved Noah to point. So that was important because Noah, you know, he's, he's six, two and a half now, almost six, three, but I did not know how big he was going to be. And he shot the ball so well, as everybody knows. Um, I didn't want, necessarily want to take his greatest asset away from him, but I also knew for future um, he's had, he has to get that ball in his hands and learn how to make all the right reads, pick and rolls, things like that. So leaving Drive Nation was a, was a necessity for me because I wanted to make sure that I can, I can keep my sons developing the right way at the point position. Um, when it's all said and done, um, I got to make sure that he's in a good position to, to go to college too. Yes, right? sir. Um, I was not being paid to the coach. I've never been paid a penny to coach all these years, right? Not one yes, cent. Sir. I never got a check all the way through. I was going to do it because my son was doing it. Um, and I took a lot of kids with, with me, but making the move to Trey Young was important because for one, you know, Trey and his dad asked me to do it, right? You know, and I went and met with Ray, Trey's dad in Oklahoma and, and um, we talked about it. He's like, you know, are you really, you, are you really going to leave Nike? I'm like, if, 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 if Trey wants to do a 17U team, I'm coming. So mm -hmm. that was after our sophomore year. So for Noah's last season, I went to build Team Trey Young for Trey. It's just mm -hmm. a way to pay it forward, right? I remember um, Trey being part of Pro Skills in ninth grade to now playing playing for his organization years later when he's a pro. So I wow. thought it would be a good story. I like Trey. I love that family. And uh, nothing wrong with Jermaine. It was just about opportunity. And it was about putting my son in the best position to be successful along with the other kids. And when I made the transition, I didn't take everybody. Right? I didn't ask everybody to come, honestly. Because at that point, these, they, these kids have already made their name. And I wanted them to do what they thought was best for them. Right. Sometimes you got to love them enough to let them go. Right? Yeah. You know, so um, that's what we did. We made the move. I took a couple kids with me that, that wanted to come and we built team training and made them a powerhouse right away. Mm. That's amazing. That's mm -hmm. an amazing story. And this is such a thankless job, you know, um, everywhere you went, I've been with you. Um, when you're a visionary, sometimes people that don't see your vision, you know, they don't understand you, 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 you go from, I tell people basketball is the only thing where I can go from getting $10,000 worth of free dinner work to being a bum, selfish bum, <laughs> just because somebody kid didn't enjoy or they didn't like the way the kid played or they kid don't play for me no more or not understanding that we still fathers, like your obligation is to know and making sure he's successful. And just because I have the gift to teach kids, I still have to, you know, look out for my son. So, well, and, and being a father is always your first and most important job you know, next to being a husband, right? And um, with Noah, you know, it was amazing that people would say daddy ball 
Of course, they wouldn't say it to my face, but I was just hearing all the noise. Keep in mind, I brought in Bryce Griggs and Keontae George in fifth grade, right? When my son played their position, right? Right. And my mindset was those kids that stayed there, they were better than Noah from a basketball player standpoint. They couldn't shoot like Noah, right? But overall, they were more athletic. They were bigger. They were better. Yeah. And, uh, and I had those conversations with Noah um, because that made him better. Yeah. And, and, you know, so I brought in smoke to make sure my kid got better. Yes. Right. And to this day, you know, like those guys, are, those are his best friends. Keontae, Ryland Griffin, those are, right, those are his best friends in the world to this yeah. day. They, they still, they, they, these kids are still tight. They support each other and everything. And, you know, so when I, when I heard the daddy ball thing, I, I, I remind people, you know, I brought in Bryce and Kathy the same year to beat my son because he needed that. Yeah. But, you know, we all end up winning at the end. Made yeah, we story. do. Yeah, that's God, man. You got you to gotta thank God for that. You, 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 Every day. You put others first. Yeah, you put others first. And uh, Noah, Noah, Noah came out of it. Now, yeah. in Texas, I know the AU game is very, very strong. You guys – have such a such a wealth of talent early, even before the Titans. How were you able to? Was the Titans your original organization when you got in the game and decided when I, when to work with When I first got kids? into it, yeah, um, I worked with the Texas Titans, and my little kindergarten team was called the Titans. <laughs> yeah, little kindergarten. Yeah, so that's what got me in, and I learned a lot from them. You know, they were backed by um, a multi billionaire uh, named Kenny Trout. And um, I just watched how um, Mr. Trout and, you know, head coach Scott Pospickle and, you know, Jeff Webster and those guys, I watched how they ran their organization. Mm-hmm. And I basically, they built the blueprint, right? Now, I did not have the billion dollars or the private jets, right? But the way they done it and the way they treated these kids and the families, that was amazing to me. So I had a model to follow. Okay. And I used that same model the Texas Titans gave to me when they, my boys were four and five years old, and I de- took it everywhere I went with my group. And that's the reason why a lot of those families and kids stayed with me, because we've done things right. I mean, we had mandatory devotion on trips, right? You know, we've done things a lot together as a family, and that was, and that was important because yeah. it became bigger than basketball real, very quickly. And I think to this day, <clears throat> those parents appreciated that, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm, like I said, next week I'm going to Baylor. Spend the whole day with Keontae, right? You know, because that's family, right? Right. And you know, and those are those are those, those 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 families are really close to me. You know, I'm gonna make sure I try to go spend time with all these kids while they're in college, weeks of the day with them, just to check in on. Them. Yeah. You know? it's so, amazing. How is uh How is Noah doing at Vandy? You know, Noah's doing great, man. Um, you know, I put on a bunch of muscle. Yeah. I, I try my best to prepare him for, 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 for college by giving him the real, right? Yeah. You know, he's been called every name in the book. Yeah. Right? And he's responded. Yeah. Um, one thing about Noah, he's always responded. Yeah. When I brought in Bryce Griggs and Kante George, he responded. Yeah. When I brought in Derek Whitehead, Mark, he, he responded, right? Yeah. And this is no different. Right. It's been an adjustment because college basketball is hard. Very hard. Very, very hard. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, um, you know, he'll, he'll play primarily off the ball, but he will play, be on the ball and sometimes. Generally, he's maybe in the second ball screen because mm-hmm. um, they got they got a senior point guard, right, junior point guard. Um, but it's going through the process. It's been a process for him. And it's been a process for me. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, definitely. And I got a son who's a four-star recruit going to – University, I'm thinking, shoot, we're gonna be all right. Shit, that shit's hard. <laughs> yeah, you know? definitely. Jerry Stackhouse ain't giving them shit. Yeah, you got to go yeah. get it. You got to right? go get it. Yeah. Given, and, that, and, that's, and that's how it should be. He has yeah. to go out. He has to earn it every day. Yeah. For yeah. if you want to play in the SEC, Big Twelve, Pac Twelve, Mac, any conference in college basketball, yeah. you got to earn it every day. Yeah. The junior team, they've been there. They've been through the process. They know the system. They know all the coverages, right? And with Stackhouse, if you don't if you don't know the defensive coverages, you ain't playing. He don't care who you are, mm. you know. So Noah had to learn how to play 
Yeah, they learned how to. They knew how to play defense, but high school defense and college defense ain't the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it has to be an obsession. Ask your son; it ain't the same. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean defense <laughs> is real. You're really playing yeah. defense, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're competing every second. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So he's loving it. Yeah. You know, he has all A's already. That's you amazing. know, he got two A's there in the summer. I mean, his grades are off the charts. Um, and that's, you know, we look at the 40 year plan, right? Yeah. You know, at some point that basketball is going to stop bouncing. Yes, sir. And, uh, him being prepared for life is, is, is way more important to me uh, than being prepared for a basketball game. Yes, sir. Um, and he's been doing great. I also have my big kid Lee Dort there with him. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, they've been doing great. Lee, Lee is an amazing story, man. Um, the time and the care you put in the nurture his development. Cause most big kids, that confident, like kid guys that who got a skills bag, like you and I, we know you really got to walk that big guy along psychologically as much as you do physically. So just tell me about what what has been a joy, like to have that young man around you, you know, and watch his development. You know, and Lee Dort is an amazing story, you know, from Haiti. You know, I, I ran a mission with Haiti. So I've helped about 10 kids from, from, from out of this country to come to America to have a better chance at life. I think Lee was number nine, right? Um, and, you know, Lee, when they gave me a call about Lee, I was tired. I mean, I mean meaning that taking care of international kids are hard, is hard to do, especially when you have your own family, right? And it had to be okay with my wife, had to be okay with Noah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but what that taught Noah is Noah's selfless now. He grew up with it not all being all about him. He had to share his parents and he was okay with that. It's really molded him to, to, to who he is today. But with Lee, when they gave me a call about Lee, they said, hey, Derek, we got a kid. I know you don't want to do this, but can you help this kid? I said, well, tell me about the kid. Well, he's 6'9", he's, 6'10", he's, he's six, six, this, this, and that. Um, he's not from Port-au-Prince. I was like, okay, that's a positive. Yeah. Because not that Port-au-Prince, I mean, Port-au-Prince is really a bad and really, really yeah. tough city. It's tough, right? yeah. I mean, I think it's the fourth most dangerous city in the world, actually. Wow, yeah. You know, and the kids from Port-au-Prince, are, are, they're, they're different. Yeah. They're different, right? Yeah. And he, he's, from a, he's from the countryside of Haiti. He said, okay, that's a positive. Then he said this statement. He said he has both parents. I said, okay. That was huge because... This world is hard, man. This world is hard. And when you have a mother and a father, you're, you're, you're raised a little bit differently. And and actually shout to all the single moms who have to play both roles. Yeah. Because right? it's yeah. hard. Even the single dads that have done both roles. It's hard. Yeah. But with Lee being from Haiti and having both parents, that's damn near Shit, that's, that's, that's like a $3 bill. You don't see that. Very often. <laughs> yeah. So when he came over here, he was, he was, he was well-behaved. He was mature and he was extremely intelligent, you know, spoke no English. So it's four years of, he came in when he was a freshman, it's four years of emotional support, you know, financial support, um, <clears throat> spiritual support. Um, all that goes into that and molding him to who he is. He's a phenomenal young man. Mm. Um, he also has all A's at Vanderbilt. This guy came from Haiti with nothing to at Vanderbilt University, right? Amazing. I mean, just that alone is just an amazing accomplishment. And that's those are the things that I'm really most proud of is being able to help a kid, not just my own, have a chance to go to college for free, right? To get that education and being able to be be part of so many young young men's lives. And especially those international kids who come from nothing, it's really a remarkable that him coming to Vanderbilt getting an education will forever change his family's legacy for forever. Yeah. Um, and that's really important. Something I take a lot of pride in. Yeah, that's that just speaks to your character because I want people to know, like, you know, of course, um, <clears throat> excuse me, being in Indiana, navigating the framework at the, through AAU, even when we met, <clears throat> and excuse me, you made your ascension. You always checked on me, man. Hey, you need something, let me know, bro. You send me your order number. Send me just selfless, like I'm good. Nah, man. Hey, 
I seen you on Twitter, man. You good. You know, you just always been kind of a guy to check the temperature of the people you care about. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think that's what separates you in this game and allows you to have a son who's also a leader. You know what I mean? I think that's what it is. I appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate it. So let me ask you, so you totally, are you in the gym any? Like, or are you just, just strictly yeah, you know everything circuit I mean, now? I'm, I'm, I'm in the gym, you know, all the time. Actually, I, I went and played basketball yesterday. Then I had a heart attack, but I was out there, right? I, I still think I can hoop a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And no knees, no bad knees, bad feet, bad hips. But, 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 but that jumper is still money, though. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm in the gym still. I mean, I have a kid that I take care of now. He's the last one. He's the one. He's a sophomore in high school. Mm -hmm. um, so he's actually from Lagos, Nigeria. Okay. Um, so I'm his guardian, legal guardian. So we're, I take care of him, making sure he's on the straight and narrow, doing this, what he needs to do. So because of that, I'm in the gym, and, you know, he's really, really good, man. He's, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so he, we is, got uh, another one, another power five. Yeah. He, his name is Francis Chukwetabelu. Mm. Um, he's already a five star in rivals, top 20 in ESPN, mm. sophomore. Um, I've had a lot of kids and I had, I've had nothing like him. Wow. What makes something. him special? What makes him different? <sighs> well, he's 6'10, about 6'10 and a half. Um, he has a, a seven five wingspan, and he's fluid, mm. fluidity. Um, he reminds you, like my buddy Rashad Phillips talked Shout about. Out, he yo. reminds you of a Jaron Jackson, Chris Bosh. Mm. Um, he shoots the piss out of it at six ten. He's the modern day big, a stretch five that can pull you out and and not, I mean, in the in the Kansas City EYBL. I think he shot 80% from three, right? He has a strap. And and it was long, he can stand flat-footed with the ball touching the rim. Mm. I mean, he's that long. And on top of that, he's a 4.0 student and also an artist. He's a mm. special young man. And he's been here since he was 12. But no one knew about him because it was Nolan Lee. Yeah. Francis had to wait his turn. Yeah. So I got no one leave, but through all that time, he got better. He kept growing and growing and growing. And that story's interesting too. And coach in Nigeria knew about me and was trying to help me take kids. And he ended up being the one that came. Um, and he's part of that story too. He, he, he's special. Uh, Michigan state just offered him. Um, so we have Michigan state, Kansas, Auburn, mm. Memphis, mm. a state, SMU, TCU, Vanderbilt. He's 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 a special talent. You know, I think I think he'll be a uh, I think he'll be a lottery pick in three years. Mm. Where is he playing high school? He's at um, Prestonwood Christian Academy, the same high school Julius Randall went to. Mm. That's impressive. You yeah. keep you one. I know you're working on the day to day t details, the the diet, the stretching, the mental. That's what allows the guys to get through. A lot of kids don't know like. It's such a well-rounded package. Like, even with my son, like, it's so much discipline to the workouts that allow you to transition because if too many guys in this AAU game are friends with these kids and they get to college. They don't understand that these guys in college are not your friend at all. So at all. Um, it's good to have this podcast because I want a lot of young coaches to understand, like, you may have to lose a parent or kid, but you can't become a jokester or a clown with them. You know what I mean? You have to maintain firm. Yeah. What 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 I did with the, all these kids is that I, I coached them really, really hard, but I loved them even harder. And they felt it. It was genuine. It always has been genuine. But I was tough on these kids. Yeah. I mean, I, I can yeah. call right I can call Keontae right now and start yelling at him. It it it'll mess his whole day up. Yeah. I, yeah. I can call Ryan Jeff and it's just start I mean, cause they respect me and they care for, we care for each other so much. They know it's coming from a good place. And, and the benefit of that is that I had parents who understood that. And that was important. They let me coach and develop their kid. They didn't get in the way. Yeah. 
That's amazing. I remember to tell you a quick funny story. In fifth grade, I cut Rylan Griffin from the team. Um, he's one of our best players, but he, he talked back to me in practice. And I was really, that's not Rylan. So I got, I'm going to teach you a lesson. So I made him run, 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 and kicked him off the team. Now, but before I did that, I called his parents. Here's, here's what I'm going to do to Rylan. Right? He said, all right, that, that's fair. Let's do it. It's about life lessons. Hmm. Went to his house. I, I took his backpack, took his shoes. I even took his socks. <laughs> took my uniform back. He was in tears. He was mad. But it taught him a lesson about respect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that, and he's like my son to this day. Yeah. But we done we had moments like that throughout this process. And I was blessed to have the phenomenal parents who let me do it that way. And they supported me all the way through. And to this day, we're still the best of friends. And the real life lesson is that not only that you were able to corral that energy, but his parents, like you said, they didn't baby him. They didn't pacify him. They allowed you to coach him and, and instill that discipline in him. And that, that's what kind of made him a stronger player that he is today. Yeah, we, did, we did it together. You know, yeah, I was the coach, but without their support, Nothing happens, right? And yeah. I need I needed their support. I, I would always be pointing. This is what I'm going to do. Are you okay with that? Right? Yeah. That, it's their child. Right? Yeah. So I'm gonna, I, I wanted yeah. to make sure I let them know. And we were, we were always on the same page with all these kids. What um, what what makes Texas basketball different from anywhere across the country? Very good question. You know, we're we're down here saying we're the new mecca, hmm. right? And I've been all around the country. And the basketball in Texas is hands down the best. And it's been the best for, for five or six years, seven, eight years, honestly. We're just not talking about it, but we're no one's producing what we're producing here. And there's multiple reasons because of that. For one, the kids go against each other a lot, right? They play against each other, okay? The training here is off the charts, off the charts from, you know, the Tyler Rells, Tim Martins, um, Barrington Stevens, um, Terrell Harris, um, Woody. There's so many great developers here. That's huge. Okay. And on top of that, our media around these kids is second to none. You know, not just the circuit, circuit is more national, but we got a lot of local media that really pump the kids. Right. And, and, you know, we work together together. On that standpoint, in most cases, just a lot of bickering going on, I imagine. But um, this is where it's at. I mean, these kids battle here. and They're battle tested. If you're good here, you're good everywhere. I mean, even with the 2022 class, being honest, we there, there was 20 kids in Dallas and Houston, Texas alone. They should have been in the top 100, at least 20, at least mm -hmm. 20. But they, the national guys wouldn't do it because it, it wouldn't look right. But... I've been all over the country. I know who's good and who's not, right? And and Texas has been loaded because of, you know, they don't dodge the smoke here. And and when they're not playing against each other, you know what they're doing? Supporting each other. These hmm. kids support each other here like no other. No and state no state has players as friends all the way through high school like Texas does. Yeah, I've but we support each other. Yeah, true story. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you may have, you may have a parent that don't like a coach, right? Parents want to fight each other. But the kids are, are texting to the game over. Hey, man, what y'all doing later? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, you yeah, yeah. The kids yeah. really support each other. They compete. When the game's over, it's all love. And that's been a really a credit to, to a lot of these kids and their upbringing, you know, because that's important. These guys support each other here when they're not competing against each yeah. other. Yeah. And, and the thing I love about you guys, you know, being envious up here in Indiana, um, we probably got one thirty-eighth of the space. A lot more hmm. BS. It's like um, you guys understand it's enough food at the table for everybody. And I think those will separate you guys. Man, there, there's 350 plus Division One schools, a lot of Division Two schools, Division Three. There's a place for everybody, right? And you know, Dallas, we take a lot of pride in getting our kids to college. Yeah. Right. You know, you know, some may go at a higher level than expected. Some may go at a lower level than expected, but. If you if you keep the right expectations up front of what the goal is, which is going to get a college education, things generally fall the right way. I mean, yeah. I, I've helped 
the kids that you know about and 10 times more than that than people that never coached. Wow. I've made calls for kids I've never coached. Yeah. I made calls for kids where, whose parents did not like me and got their kid in school. And they still don't know about it because that's the right thing to do. If we're doing it yeah. for the kids, do it for the kids. Yes. Yes. I can't not tell you how many kids I've helped go to college and parents who, tra- who, who trashed me behind my back for some reason. Yeah. I still got the kid in college. Yeah. yeah. That, I feel that was my responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. And you have an honor to yourself in the mirror and an honor to God yourself is your journey on yourself. So you can't really, I mean, look, I'm a reactionary dude, but like, like you said, when it comes to just right moral decisions, I just have to make them, you know what I mean? It's, it's just, hard because it's hard. you know what they're yeah. saying about you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then you look at the kid. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. the street, the street in me wants to be like, man, F y'all. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. But, but the Christian in me is more like, how can I help this kid? And it's just yeah. been amazing. I think it's still in my pen tweet. I've had it on there for a couple of years. It's amazing what God can do in your life when you use your blessings to bless others. Mm. So. Um, and that's just something I've, I, that's a true statement. Is that just trying to help as many kids as possible, get an education is worth yeah. it. And you know the crazy thing, Coach, and I want parents to understand this. Like, one thing about AAU coaches, they they have no problem if you leave, if you're honest. You know what I mean? We have no problem if you explore your options. But the negativity, the disrespect, the unappreciation, and God forbid, you know what I mean? Parents have cursed me out, and then four years later, a college coach be like, hey, John, I'm on the fence between this guy and another guy. What you think? And I'm like, hey, you know what, man? Go ahead, man. He, he, he a good. And I don't never say nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, but you parents have to not, you can leave a situation and not be hostile and still be respectful. You know what I mean? Well, and that's and, what burns a lot of bridges. Well, and parents need to understand this is that, I mean, I get calls still to this day from Division One coaches about parents and kids. Um, and it's my job to tell them the truth, right? Because if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember what you said. Right. You know? Right. And so what I don't want to ever have to have a coach come back to me and say, man, Derek, you lied to me. Yeah. <laughs> because their livelihood's on the line, too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I will tell yeah. a, a, a coach the truth yeah. in my experience with that individual if I've had one. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You know, I mean – I've gotten calls from tons of NBA scouts about kids. Tons. All these kids coming through. Every I've, I've talked to probably every NBA franchise that had a, that has a scout looking for a te- Texas kid at some point or another. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing about that is that not one of those phone calls from NBA was about if a kid can play or not. Not one call. Mm-hmm. It was always about tell me about his mom, tell me about his dad. Who's this guy? It was always about who's in the circle. It was never mm-hmm. about can the kid play. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, you know, it's really important for these individuals, these young kids to make sure, and these parents, make sure you keep your kids around good people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Stay yeah. around good people. Yeah. And we spoke about this uh, off the books before, but like, Parents got to understand, it's a lot of nefarious guys in the game. You have to understand what a guy contributes to the game when he comes around your son. Is he a coach? Has he coached before? What's his resume? Is he a trainer? What's his resume? If not, what's his purpose? We got to eliminate a lot of hanger-ons from AAU basketball because they're getting in these kids' ears at 12, 13, 14, and once the kid's life life is damaged, they disappear. Yeah, that, 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 that's unfortunately, that's that's the case in a lot of what goes on in this, in this culture. Yeah. Right. You're yeah. only as good as your last shot you made yeah. Yeah. a lot of times. And it's really hard to find um, really good people in this industry. Yeah. Um, but there are some out there. Yes, sir. You know, so you really got to do your research. And once you know what you want out of this business, do your research according to that. And, and here's the, it's okay. If it's not right, it's okay to find something else. Yes. Right. It's just okay. That's just part of life. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, um, and it, it's also in this industry, as a parent, sometimes you got to be selfish. Yeah. You just have to be. You have to make yeah. sure it's best for your child. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because no one's going to care more about your kid than you. Yeah. 
Yeah. But it's a tough industry out there. So if I'm a coach, I mean, I'm looking for the right set of parents, the right type of kid. Yeah. I'm a parent I'm looking for the right type of coach, right type of program that has yeah. relationships that yeah. align with my goals. Yeah. Yeah. And my thing always is my advantage is win or lose. I always look for coaches that coach JJ extremely hard. So I didn't want no favors. I wanted to be the guy to be like, my goal with him is say, look, and I got video of it. I used to say, look, third, first, second grade, we're not competing with Indiana. We compete with Texas, California, Georgia, Florida, DMV, Chicago. Like, that's our competition. So my thing used to always be, I want to be able to play against somebody from Texas, Georgia, California. You always hold your own, and that's what I was able to do. Mm -hmm. um, lastly, before I get you out of here, I want to talk about your relationship with, with Trey Young, the foundation. You do a lot of stuff outside of basketball, a lot of philo uh, a lot of charitable stuff with them. So I just want to talk about your relationship with that family and why it's so important to you. Well, you know what? I mean, I met the Young family when Trey was in eighth grade. And um, my buddy George Clay, who actually runs Trey Young currently, um, called me and said, hey, man, you need to come, you need to come watch this kid. It was at, it was at Pango's in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Like, who? What kid? I said, man, this kid named Trey from Oklahoma. The, what, I said, big man? No, he's a guard. He's come watch him. Come watch him. So I go up there and watch him. I'm like, hmm, this kid, yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. Shot the, shoot the. And we just became friends with the family at that point. Yeah. You know, and, and Ray and, and, and Candace, they really wanted him to get out of Oklahoma to play against the best, right? You know, so we used to actually drive, mainly George would drive to Norman, Oklahoma to pick Trey up and bring him to Dallas to practice. You know, Trey would sleep on my couch, mm. right? Eat up all the food. You know what I'm saying? And we just became friends, right? You know, we knew Trey was good. It was going to be good. You know, could we guess then that he was going to be top five pick in eighth and ninth grade? No one knows that. Um, but we just developed a, a relationship that's genuine and, um, cause they're genuine people. And, um, I've always loved the family. They're good people. And when they, when we, we, we reached out to each other to talk about this. Um, you know, Ray was interested in doing it. Trey wanted to do it. I said, you know what? I'm gonna do it. And I brought my guy, George with me, who's someone that they known and respected for a long time. So George and I started team Trey Young for, for Ray and Trey. And I uh, brought in the right prospects, start them off on a good start, and the rest is history. Mm. I talk to Ray all the time to this day. You know, Trey's really close with Noah. Trey and Noah have the same birthday. Mm. It was Monday, September 19th. You know, so um, Trey's someone who's always looked after Noah, mentored Noah. You know, if he sees Noah in a crowd, he's going to point him out, and he's going to grab him, right? Um, they're just good people, and they've always have been good. You know, Ray's from Texas originally. Um, they're just good people, you know, great parents. He has a, a little brother and uh, two sisters, and it's just always been a genuine relationship. He, he, he allowed me to kind of go through the process with Trey um, and kind of kept me, um, gave me information as, I, as he went through the process, that way I could learn later in case I ever get in that situation with one of, one of these other kids or even my own son. So Ray's been an open book for me. To this day, he called me last week, right, um, doing the talk about what's going on, how things are going. An extremely, extremely intelligent family that knows that, you know, Ray was a basketball player at Texas Tech, hmm. um, played overseas. Um, he was a pro, right? So he knows the industry, knows the business. And I just try to, you know, get as much from him as I can and share with these other families down here that are going through the same process. He literally yeah. called me last week and said, hey, Derek, when you talk about these families, make sure they understand this, this, and this, right? You know, I had a meeting last night with the family, and we talked about that conversation I had with Ray, right? As they start going through their process of a kid that may have a chance to become a professional athlete. So you got to sometimes you got to give the game up. You got to pass it along, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to make sure you give game to the next next people coming. Yeah. You can share it. Share it. Share it. Yeah. And one thing that we don't do as a, as our culture being the African-American culture is that we don't help each other out enough. Yeah. You know, we want to beat each other so much, you know, let's help each other out the best we can. The way we're better prepared. The next year is better prepared. 
the next generation is better prepared. So, you know, if you, if you, as you get knowledge, you know, pass it down. You know, I mean, what, what you learned out there, pass it, pass it down, help the next one. I love the name each one, teach one. You know, I mean, teach the next person, next generation, next family going through the same process about what it's going to be like. You know, one thing I told um, Keontae George and his mom, he was in eighth grade in Las Vegas. So this is this was about to, ha- about to happen. Everything I told Keontae's mom was going to happen, happened. Every single thing. But worse. <laughs> and to that, to this day, you know, we, we look at each other and we just smile. Man, Derek, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm as tight with them as, 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 as the Griffins. And I mean, we're just, we're all a big family. And because they trusted me and I didn't lie to them. I gave them the best truth I could give them based on my experience and my knowledge. Right. And it played out like a book. You know, you, so, you told me in a, in a hot gym in Henderson, Nevada, I think eighth grade, one summer, I'm talking about just one of them Nevada days, so 137, and we in a gym. You was like, I'm telling you, this Keontae kid going to be top five, top three in the country. And I was like, I got you. And as to watch it play out, it was just, it was just another scenario, man. I, um, I really appreciate you taking the time, you know, to elaborate, dropping out a lot of knowledge on here, man. State of Texas is in good hands. Um, Noah's in good hands. A lot of those kids are in good hands for, for what you do, man. Um, before I let you go, what can anybody watching this in Texas, AAU specifically, what can they do to keep that brand separate and keep you guys ahead of everybody else? What can you continue to improve on? I mean, honestly, we need to. We still need to work more together, even though we're doing a, doing a better job of that. Mm-hmm. Um, we need to keep supporting each other. And if we all agree to keep the kids first, I think everything falls into place. If we keep the kids first, yeah, you know, agreed. because that's what it's really about is keeping the kids first, keeping their expectations in the right, right way, keeping them focused and helping them go to college for free. That's what our goal is. So we can just keep doing that here in Texas. Um, you know, it'll be, it'll be a beautiful, beautiful thing here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. The athlete, but... the, the athlete pool is amazing. And the yeah, developmental about, pool is Texas amazing. Texas is a big state, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> You probably put about four or five Indianas inside of Texas. I remember, I remember, I remember a young, we, we driving, I mean, like from Dallas to El Paso is halfway to Los Angeles. I mean, think about that. That's how big Texas is, right? Yeah, Jesus Christ. There's yeah. a lot of talent here. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, a lot of talent. A lot of guys that don't get the attention they deserve, which is one of the reasons why I built, I built the circuit. Because I had a kid that I, I didn't think got the attention he deserved, right? Mm, yeah. And there's a lot of kids that have that same story. So yeah, but yeah, we're doing all right in Texas. No one, no one feels sorry for us down here. Nah, nah, they not. We not feeling sorry for you. Like we, I know where the arms are. I was, I was definitely. Uh, I called you a hundred times trying to get some suburban advice. I almost made the jump plenty of times because I just knew <laughs> that's where the competition was. And like, if you somebody like me that want to prove your son can play, you want to play against Texas kids. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They they long, they athletic, they tough. Um, I remember playing against um first time I played against Gulf Coast and we was coaching, I said something and one of the moms was like, Man, if you don't shut out, sit down with that ugly shirt on, I was like, Yeah, I like Texas. You know what I mean? Like I I like yeah. Houston. I like they ain't gonna play with you. And and those, and those moms still doing that. <laughs> and we they friends to this play. day. You leave their baby alone. <laughs> nah, nah. You not. Them Texas mamas is gonna tell you something about hey, yourself hey, real quick. Hey, these people here, man, they 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 support their kids. Yeah, they want definitely. all the smoke. They want now, all of. Is it a um? Before I ask about these tournaments and wrap you up, is it a style of play? I'm always curious. What's the style of play difference between Houston and Dallas? You know what? I mean, it's probably fairly similar. Houston, they got such some really good programs down there. The coaching has gotten so much better. Yeah. Overall, you know, you look at you know the John Lucas program. You look at Houston, who's ran by my Mo Taylor. Mo Taylor's a pro, yeah. right? So the coaching has gotten so much better in both of those cities. It's like that's what's really helping us. We're teaching translatable skill sets. Yeah. We're teaching stuff that translates here. 
even from the training. I mean, yeah. If you go sit in on a Tim Martin or Barrington or Tyler workout, it's real live simulation stuff, right? Wow. The, the teaching is such a high level. So I think from a playing style standpoint, it's very similar because these kids are playing the right way. I mean, when my, kid, when my team was in third grade, we were running quicks and drags. Yeah. Right? Ball screen action. Yeah. In third grade. I remember. Right? And that's important. They knew how to play. Now, in third grade, as long as you can press and make layups, you win. Yeah, yeah. But at some point, you got to start coaching. Yeah. Right? So the, the playing styles here is, I mean, everybody's a little different. We want to play fast a lot of times. We got guys that can make shots. We're athletic. We're big. Yeah. Um, we're tough. And we're used to playing against each other a lot. Yeah. yeah. So, so when yeah. we see Indiana Elite, George Hill, when we see that, I mean, we, we're trying to bust them, right? Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. And another thing I like about uh, Texas is um, the people, the administration, society, they don't care. They don't give a damn by letting you know they love sports. So, like, y'all don't throw no kids away. So it might be an A, B, C, and D team. So if a kid's a late bloomer, he may have a better opportunity there with a high intense sports culture than he would somewhere else just getting cut the first time. You see what I mean? Because I see so yeah. many Texas kids bloom late. Somebody else, they probably wouldn't even been access to the gym. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, with a lot of late bloomers here, and there's so many opportunities. There's so many teams that there's a place for everybody. Right, but there's a lot of late bloomers, a lot, right, right. that come on at the last minute. Like what? The, and sometimes that's actually best. Yeah, you know, my, <laughs> yeah. my motto is be great late. Be great late. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the earlier you get there, the faster they're gonna try to take you down. Yeah, real but quick. If, but if you can sneak real up quick. on somebody, you got a good shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quick, man. Um, yeah, and prayer, prayers for Monty Bates, man. I want that young man to keep his yeah. head up, man. In that situation, we've all we all rooting for you. We all love you. Uh, we've been watching you since you was a young man. You have a whole community praying for you. Um, and I also like speaking hmm. on Monty real quick. From what I know about you know EJ and, and his his mom, they're good people. Exactly. Uh, exactly. You yeah. Know, so don't rush to judgment on on Imani in that situation um, until everything comes out. Yeah. Um, because they're good people. And Imani's always been a very 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 respectful kid. Yeah. Extremely. I've been I've known him since he was in sixth grade. Yeah. He's always been a yes sir no sir type of kid. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, so let's, let's not rush to judgment. Exactly. Until things come, still trying to see what happened and we'll make sure we keep praying for the Bates family for sure. Yes, sir. Let's like, let's, let's, let's wrap, wrap this young man up in love. You know what I mean? It's like something right. I would want for my child or anybody else's child. Like I don't, I don't do the scavenger hunt because once the scavenger, if you in a scavenger hunt, you want nobody's friend anyway. Mm -hmm. And I consider, uh, you know, Elgin a friend. So I'm supporting that family. Um, yeah. Let's talk about what the circuit has coming up this year, just preliminary. I'm going to get you back on. But I want some of these AAU programs, because I'm trying to get some of these Indiana Midwest teams to get down there to Texas to get some of that, you know, get some well, of that smoke down I got, there. I got some good news for you. We're working with a new facility out in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Oh. It's not even public yet. And we're going to do probably two or three events in Indiana this year. Okay. In Fort Wayne. I think it's the Auburn Sports Group, I believe it's called. Okay. Um, they're building a 14-court facility there. It's going to be extremely nice. Um, I think it, it doesn't open until, I think, April or May. Wow. April, I think. So we'll do some events in Indiana to get that area. We'll do a few here in the Dallas market. Um, we're also going to be doing our first event this year. We'll be in Dallas, and it'll be for the youth. Okay. Third grade through eighth grade. It's time for them now, right? Okay. So we're going to start building content around these third through eighth graders. It'll be the president's, the president's Day weekend in Dallas. Okay. So that flyer will be coming out pretty soon. And then we'll have a few, of course, high school events in, uh, in Indiana and also in Dallas. And hopefully we can help more kids get some scholarships. Are you guys touching Las Vegas this year, end of the year? West Coast, maybe? You know what? Um, we may not do Vegas. If we do anything in Vegas, it may just be a camp. Okay. Not a tournament, not a showcase. Okay. Maybe just a camp. We're going to kind of get a couple camps in this year where we can bring in two or 300 kids, have them compete. Yeah. Um, and we'll bring in a lot, of, a lot of the national evaluators to evaluate. Yeah. Um, but 
I mean, when you go to Vegas, I want to hang out, right? Right, right, right. I don't want to be in the gym work. <laughs> you know, I know that, yeah. You know, <laughs> right. your parents will love it because they can just drop the yeah. kid off the camp. They yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like, who yeah. wants to go to Vegas and work when it's 110 out, 110 yeah. degrees? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, maybe, like, I got some ideas here, too. We can we can discuss later, like, because I, I got a big email base with, like, 300 kids in here, so I kind of want you to do something here, too, man, like, just to kind of maybe, like, a mini one. We yeah, do yeah, we did something there something. for sure. We got we got a facility now. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, we are going to do an event in Rucker Park this year, coming up this next year. Oh, that's hard. We we ended up not doing it this past year because the NBA per, uh, PA needed it for, uh, on our date, and they kind of trumped us, <laughs> yeah. right? The circuit and got the NBA Players Association. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> um, we're looking at doing an event uh, outside at Rucker Park this year. It's going to be bananas. So like all star camp like or best of the best something like that. We're probably gonna bring in about sixteen, seventeen new teams, and then probably do um, some all star games for the class of twenty five, twenty six, twenty four, twenty five, and twenty six probably. Yeah, I need a press pass for, for for that one, my brother. Oh yeah, we got you. Yeah, we got. So well, thank you, man. Um, I'm, I want I want to get this out, man. You you've been a blessing to have on here. I want to do this again as the tournaments come. And I want teams from Indiana to know. So say if it's a team and he's like, man, I want to go to Dallas and these kids are getting better later, but maybe his team is B or C level. Do you still have other divisions for, for teams like that? Well, I mean, when you do an, an event, I mean, whoever gets in gets in. Yeah. You know, but if you come into Texas, you're going to, you got to be prepared to play out. You're getting all the smoke when you come here. Yeah. And you're getting yeah, all of yeah, it, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah, you may be lining yeah. up against an EYBL team. Yeah. Adidas team yeah. or an elite independent team, but hey, you you, you better bring it. Yeah, we're, yeah. I mean, we're, we're we're playing some good basketball here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if, if, you, if you don't want that smoke, stay out of Texas. Yeah, like like, like Xavier Booker. Yeah, Indiana kid, right? He came it's here and put on a show. Okay, the rest is history. You do well here, people are gonna know about it. Yeah, yeah. I promise yeah. you that. Yeah, because once them Texas write ups come out, them scholarships come out. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I respect that. Okay. Okay, my brother. Uh, I'm going to definitely keep you on. You know, you uh, SEC on Big Sky. We gonna, we always check on our boys this year, man. Um, um, Noah's always been best shooter in the country ever since I've seen him. Humble kid. Just, you know, just your son, man. Just following the footsteps of a leader. So I appreciate you, my brother. I'm going to get this up and running, and we're going to be in touch. All right, thank you, man. Appreciate you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Proud of you. Yes, sir. Likewise. I tell your family thank I said you. hi. I will do. Likewise. All right, thank brother. You. Peace. Yeah, that was lit.